In this video, we're going to be talking about opposing motion, which is not necessarily a technique so much as it is a musical idea that can be applied in a lot of different ways. So, the idea might have a bunch of different names. You might call it opposing motion or contrary motion, but um, the basic idea is exactly what it sounds like. So you have sound moving in two directions at once. So one voice that's moving down as you're playing, and another voice that's moving up as you're playing at the same time. So this is obviously very easy to achieve when you have more than one instrument. You just have one play a descending melody and the other play an ascending melody and then you're good to go. But for one instrument, it can be a little bit trickier. I think keyboardists and pianists might, this might be a little bit more intuitive for them. You just have one hand moving to the right while the other hand moves to the left and you're good to go. But for guitar and other stringed instruments like Chapman stick or the bass, it can be a little bit trickier to try to find a way to incorporate this idea. So, we're going to go through three different examples and show you exactly how you can do it and what you should be thinking about and looking at on the fretboard in order to make it happen. So, the first example we're going to look at is using two-hand tapping. And I'll just play it once, then we'll analyze it. This is from Peace of Mind called Exploration in C Major. <laughs> Basically what's going on here is we've got one hand that's just holding notes and then the, the right hand is tapping notes higher up on the fretboard and then they'll shift at the same time. So the first little chunk we've got the left hand is holding down one on the low E string and the right hand is tapping on 15 on the same string. And then at the same time they shift. So the left hand slides up to three on the E string while the right hand starts tapping on thir uh, 15 on the low E string. Oh, we were on 17 before, then down to 15. Sorry about that. So, just that one part again. So, neither part of this is particularly difficult. It's a simple slide and just an easy tapping pattern. It's doing them both at the same time that can be tricky to try to coordinate both both of your hands, unless you have some sort of mental dual processor. But what I like to do is I'll have my eyes focused on one part of the fretboard. Let's say I'm, I'm looking at my left hand. And I try to memorize what this area looks like. Try to envision the relationship between where you are and where you want to be. And just store that as a picture in your memory. And then right before the hands move, you'll immediately switch to the other hand and just get a quick snapshot of what that looks like. I mean, that's <laughs> somewhat exaggerated head movement, but you get the idea. The basic idea being, since you've been focusing on one area, that will just sort of happen naturally without you really having to think about it and then you can divert your attention to the hand that you haven't been looking at. And that's just, that's just the way that I do it. I'm sure there's other ways of thinking about it that can make it work, but yeah, that, that works for me. interests you, then you'll want to practice it to the point where the jumping back and forth with your eyes just sort of happens automatically, and it's not really something that you need to think about. Because there's already so many things that you need to think about while playing, you don't want to add another one to the list. But yeah, it's just like anything else, if you practice it enough times, it can just become pretty intuitive. So the next idea that we're going to talk about, uh, I don't really have a snappy name for it, but I guess we'll call it chord sliding, where we'll have the left hand holding a chord and it'll slide down to another chord. You could slide up and then have the right hand slide down. But in this example we're going to have 
the left hand sliding down with a power chord, while the right hand slides up the fretboard with a single note. So, the chord that we'll be working with is just C power chord, C, and then 5 on the D string, and then 5 on the G string. And then it's going to slide down to 1 on the A string, 3 on the D string, 3 on the G string. Easy enough. While that's happening, the right hand is going to tap 7 on the G string, and then slide up to 10. So, this is what it looks like. Play it a couple more times slowly for you. execute this is essentially the same idea as before with the two hand tapping. Just keep your eyes focused on one thing to get a very clear idea of what that area of the fretboard looks like and how how far you'll have to shift. And then at the last second switch to the right hand or switch from the right to the left depending on whichever one you're looking at so that you get a, a quick snapshot of where you need to go to. And as before just got to practice it over and over and over again. I mean, I can do this fairly consistently now because I've <laughs> played it literally hundreds of times. But yeah, the first few dozen times, it, it's pretty nasty. <laughs> it can take a while for it get to sound good or even get the right notes. But eventually, you can get there. Cool. All right. So the third example is. A little bit more esoteric, I guess. It's uh, it's not something that has as many applications as the first two, but it's still an interesting concept in my oh-so-humble opinion. This, I guess you could call it a double slide, where both hands will actually be sliding at the same time. As a, Well, I guess that's what just happened, but single note sliding up and a single note sliding down. Not just a simple chord shift, but traveling a long distance along the fretboard. So that's that's only two frets, but in this next example, we're going to be moving seven frets. So, a little bit trickier. It's from a piece of mine called Bittersweet. here is we're starting with one hand on F sharp on the low E string, or the second fret, and the other hand is on 7 on the A string. And then they're both going to slide to C sharp on the respective strings, which is 9 and 4, which is a really interesting sound. It's, it's not very often that I can incorporate in my music, but it's very cool, because you don't often hear two things sliding in different directions and converging to the same note. This, I don't even have a good method for what you should be doing with your eyes with this one. It, um, this just takes a lot of practice as before. But um, one thing that you want to keep in mind is you want to hit the last note, the C sharp, or whichever note you're using, at the same time with both fingers. You try to, I, I try to avoid having the uh, one hand arrive earlier, significantly earlier than the other. Since, um, which means that they'll have to be sliding at different speeds if they're traveling a different distance because the right hand is moving up 7 frets, whereas the left hand is only moving 3 frets. So the right hand needs to move a lot faster if they're going to arrive at the same time. Another important thing to keep in mind, uh, this is really only relevant if you are sliding on adjacent strings, but there is the possibility of the two fingers colliding with each other, which doesn't come up very often in guitar music.
but I guess one way to, to work around that is to try to lean whichever hand is closest to you towards you, which is which can be kind of tricky because you run the risk of it sliding off of the string, which <laughs> we saw happen the first time I tried to do it. But yeah, you just try to try to keep whichever hand is closest to you as close to you as possible, and whichever hand is farthest away from you, touching the string with as little of the finger as possible. You don't you don't want to be doing something like this where the finger is just blatantly touching all the strings. You want as little surface area between your finger and the string as possible. Those are the only three examples I've prepared for this, so I hope you enjoyed it, hope you found it helpful. See if you can try to incorporate it in your music. I'd love to see some videos of this.